Hi everyone. Tonight, I will introduce you to a friend of mine whose name is William, William Watkins. And William has had a path throughout Christianity until he realized he wanted to embrace the path of shamanism. William is also a contactee with the Pleiadians. And he has um, some interesting, very interesting information to share with us. So William, how are you? I just couldn't be better. And this is a real honor to talk to you. You're a, I'm a fan, a very big fan. <laughs> <laughs> so William, you were telling me um, a little bit of your path uh, throughout Christianity and what um, led you to embrace the, uh, the path of shamanism? Um, well, that's that's very interesting. I um, all of my life, I I never considered shamanism. I to me, shamans were always just someone that wore uh, chicken bones around their neck. I didn't realize that. Uh, I knew they were important as far as the indigenous people will, but um, I was um, inspired by there's a, a a guy by the name of um, Father Malachi Martin. He was a priest uh, of all things. And he was a priest under three popes, traveled the world and he was quite a, quite a fellow. He was on coast to coast AM with Art Bell once. And he said that if he had it to go over again, he wouldn't be a priest, he would be a shaman. Well, I almost sat up in bed. I didn't know you could become a shaman. And he began to say that they, you know, they were the first, they were the first spiritual men. They were the first doctors. If uh, if you had a problem, you went to a shaman. It made a lot of sense to me. So anyway, I thought I would just check into becoming a shaman and things just fell into my lap. I mean, uh, it's an interesting story, but uh, a, a friend of mine locally was a shaman. And so one thing led to another and I became a shaman. I won't get into how, you know, the details. It's, it's very interesting and uh, synchronistically speaking. And after I became a shaman, took the four directions of the Inca medicine wheel. Oh, by the way, before I forget it, I'm going to make a lot of claims. People, people make, make a lot of claims and a lot of people have a lot of letters under their names. But whatever I say, whatever I say tonight, I don't want anyone to believe it. I want, just want you to consider it because everything I say can be proven. Can, you can look it up with this little thing right here. If you're under 90 or over two years old, you've got one of these things in your hand or within reach. So if you want to check me out, I'm not going to say anything that can't be checked out on the phone. So when we get into the woo-woo stuff, uh, anyway, I, after I became a shaman, I realized um, I was contacted by the Palladians. I wasn't seeking anything. I It just, uh, to put it plainly, they contacted me i didn't contact them now when it comes to being contacted i wasn't searching the way this is very important for any for everyone to know synchronicity is very important synchronicity is the alphabet of the spirit mental telepathy is the language of the spirit but mental telepathy um, but synchronicity is the Alphabet, you first have to learn your ABCs, then the words, and then letters, letters, words, sentences, paragraphs. So if you're bombarded with synchronicity, one example is if you wake up at the middle of the night and open one eye to see what time it is and the clock says 333, three, three, that's okay, it's, you know. But if it happens the second night, it might be something interesting. But if it goes off of the charts, if you uh, are bombarded with reoccurring numbers, synchronicity, somebody is tapping you on your shoulder. If you've uh, heard of the 1111, uh, the portal of 1111, if, you if you're not familiar with the portal of 1111, it's your phone, Google it, check it out. This is how I became tapped on the shoulder. And once you're tapped on the shoulder and you realize that synchronicity has gone off the charts and realize that there's an intelligence behind it, you're forced to say, okay, if there's an intelligence behind this, who are you? Who, where, what, where, when? 
Well, when I asked the question, I was in contact with them. And when I said, who are you? It was plainly said the Palladians and we went on from there. And it's just, it's been a, it's been a, a whirlwind of information been being downloaded for over a decade now, 10, 15 years of information that uh, has hit. I've got some information tonight that's been hidden from the ages. Now, like I say, I make a lot of claims. And when I tell you what I've heard, you can check it out yourself. I never, you know, whatever I hear, whoever I hear it from, I always insist on a confirmation. You can tell me anything about anything. I'm not going to put it into my heart as a belief until it is proven to be confirmed to me that in a way that I can understand. And I'll give you an example as we go. But um, I've been in searching for truth um, all of my life for, I don't know of any time in my life that uh, I haven't been searching for truth. But come to find out, um, searching for truth is not really the way to go. Uh, it's better to search for blasphemy than it is for truth. Because I've realized that if we've been deceived for 6,000 years, if we've been deceived, especially for the last 2,000 years, that means uh, they have had to turn truth into blasphemy and teaching me blasphemy as truth. So when you start coming into truth and you start realizing that truth is blasphemy, uh, maybe you're onto something. Maybe they, there's something that's been hidden from us through the ages than it has. So I'm going to be talking about some uh, blasphemy. Today. Please. <laughs> blasphemy could possibly turn into truth. Now, well, first of all, something has come into my life in the last two or three years something called uh, remote viewing. I never heard of remote viewing until a couple of years ago, but I started following, uh, there's, uh, there's three remote viewers that uh, they're really heavy hitters. There's more than three of them, but these three, uh, one guy is uh, Dick Algar in Honolulu. Another guy is, Rick, um, is Ed Reardon in Austin, Texas. And uh, Daz Smith is in the UK. <clears throat> well, all of a sudden this, uh, this Code of Hammurabi. There, there was a documentary about the Hammurabi Code, where they re, they remote viewed the Hammurabi Code. Now, who in the world is Hammurabi? I never knew who Hammurabi was, but Hammurabi was a was an early Babylonian king. It, the and they must have figured out early on that uh, marble and Marble was uh, stood the text, test of time, and when somebody took the uh, took the um, time to etch hieroglyphics in marble or granite, that means you got a message for somebody down the road. I mean, a long ways down the road, and it, could it possibly be for us in the last days? We could argue about the last days, but you got to you got to admit that we are more in the last days than anybody has ever been before. Yep. And it says in the Bible uh, somewhere that in the last days, it's going to be as bad as it ever has been or ever will be. Now, the pickle we find ourselves in recently with all of this uh, bioweapons and humanity, if this carried on, humanity would be erased. I don't know how it could get any worse. But anyway, in, the, in this Hammurabi code, uh, Dick Algar, the three of them, Dick Algar, Ed and Jazz was given this target, a blind target. They didn't know what the heck they were remote viewing. Dick Algar, for Pete's sake, he drew a picture of the Hammurabi. And, and Dick Algar, I mean, and uh, Ed Reardon, wrote on his whiteboard, there is a planet in the solar system that sends messages to planet Earth. That caught my attention. And um, I thought, there's a planet. If there's a planet, 
I know that um, I'm talking to the Pleiades, you know, the Pleiadians. Pleiades is very mentioned quite prominently in the scripture. Job, Job, Amos, and Malachi had quite a lot to say about the Pleiadians. It's the seven sisters. It's the Job referred to the Pleiades as the sweet Pleiades. But I'm gonna, like I say, I'm gonna skip around. I'm gonna, I went, let's let's go to uh, to Jesus in the Bible. Jesus never, he was pretty careful not to say, mention the word God. He always said the Father, the Father, the Father. I come from the Father. I go to the Father. Me and the Father is going to send you back the spirit of truth that will teach you all things. So I think, why did not, why did Jesus, anyway, so I went to the concordance. You Bible study guys will know what a concordance is. It gives the definition of every word in the King James Version. So you look up the word Father. Every time Jesus said the word father, the definition is a place, not a God, but a place. Really? And I said, really? Well, if God is not a God and a place, what about this God fellow in Genesis? So I went to uh, Genesis mm -hmm. 1, looked up the first word I found about where God is. And God, uh, when God says, let us make them in our image. God, the definition of God there is Elohim. Elohim is uh, plural. They, they said, let us make them in our image. So who is the they and the our? Hmm. So if Father is not a God and Elohim is not a God, so Elohim must be a planet. It must be that planet and the universe and the solar system that sends messages to planet Earth. If that's the case, I've been worshiping a freaking planet all these years. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Go on. Oh. So, um, where do I go from here? Like I say, I never, I never accept anything. When they told me, they told me two, th two years ago, a couple of years ago, that Jesus is an alien. I thought, uh oh, that's blasphemy. Let's back up. We got to take another run at this. Jesus is an alien. Are you kidding me? Well, it's taken them two years to convince me that Jesus is not, is, is from a planet, planet Elohim. If you, uh, planet Elohim and in the Pleiades there is a planet named Elohim there is a planet in the constellation Pleiades uh, there's a planet called Elohim now that Elohim is the place that Jesus called father I come from Elohim I come from that planet in the Pleiades the seven sisters now like I say I that sounded pretty interesting, but I told them that you have to confirm this to me before I settle down and believe it. Well, let's go back to this remote viewers. The remote, and when uh, Ed Reardon in Austin, Texas, on his whiteboard with being a blind target, when he said, there's a planet in the solar system that sends messages to planet Earth. When he said that, he wrote the words, Darth Vader, now, I didn't know, what has Darth Vader got to do with, you know, this is Star Wars. And so um, I found out that one of the most iconic misquotes in movie land is when Darth Vader said to Lucas, I am your father. Yes, yes. I don't, I, you know, I've tried to get a hold of Dick Algar and Ed Rudin oh. and Jez Smith. I've tried to get a hold of them and ask them if they know the significance of Darth Vader on that whiteboard. I know what's, I know what the significance is. It's my confirmation that's telling me that that planet is the father that Jesus is talking about. But to find these guys, it's like trying to find life on Mars. But anyway, uh, that's, that's how I get a confirmation for, to me. Now that's my confirmation. The people listening, you don't, 
you don't have to use it as your confirmation. That's my, that's just my confirmation for me to believe it. Get your own confirmation. The spirit, the lay Pleiades, or whoever you're in contact with, mainly the father, will tell you your confirmation. If, you know, so when I get, uh, when I hear someone say, boy, what if the aliens uh, invaded Earth and gobbled everybody up? Well, that's not only laughable, it's, it's already happened. It happened 6,000 years ago. We've got to start addressing the elephant in the room. Nobody, but nobody talks about reptilians. The snake in the garden was a reptilian. Go to the concordance. Look up the definition of that snake. In Genesis, it is called a cockatrice. A cockatrice is a humanoid reptile. That snake that Eve was talking to was a reptilian. He was a deceiver. He, if you heard of, um, uh, what did they call it? Sistership and being bamboozled. She was beguiled. Beguiled means that one of the biggest charlatans you can imagine is a beguiler. Now, Eve is not the only one that was beguiled. We today are getting beguiled every time we turn on the TV. The, we are getting false information. Truth is turned into error. So that's why when I, like I say, I went to church, I've been in and out of more denominations that I could remember. Like I'm talking, I was 86 last month. I was saved when I was six years old. I've been at this for 80 freaking years. So I don't, I don't, I'm not as smart as I want to be, but I'm a hell of a lot smarter than I used to be. And when I'm getting information from the father, I don't have any special powers that anybody else People ask me, am I psychic? Damn right, I'm psychic. We're all psychic. We can all get messages from the Father. We have, if, if, if that, the, the Father is a planet in the solar system, that means it's a transmitter. Every transmitter has, needs a receiver. We have a receiver. We have a built-in receiver. It's called DNA. Scientists have told us recently that our DNA is wired just like an antenna. Have you heard anything lately about DNA? How about that they want to give? Does that, is that supposed to alter our DNA and our RNA? Yes. Could it be that these reptilians are trying to screw up our antenna so we can't hear from the father? This, this, uh, this, what is it in the graphene, graphene, 2,000 times stronger than titanium, 17,000 degrees. That sounds like something that's, I've never heard, but it sounds like something off world. That's what they're putting in our body. It's an uh, uh, artificial intelligence bot. You've heard of this. If they can put thoughts in your head like you're hearing from God. Getting pretty close, folks. This is the last chance we get to hear from the Father if they're screwing up our antenna, our DNA. I go into church all my life. You're supposed to go to church and receive the Spirit, which is a crock of camel dung. We don't have to receive anything. We were born with it. We were born with the Christ DNA, that antenna that picks up the messages from the Father. So, church, um, well, if, a, if uh, the father is a planet, what about this God? Where, do you, where does this God religion thing come in? If you notice in uh, Genesis 1, that's the let us make them in our image. Male and female created he them, us, created male and female. But there's a strange verse in Genesis 2. It says, there was not a man found to till the ground. Well, after, after male and female has been invented, created, created, then along comes Adam that is formed, scooped out of the clay. 
Genesis 1 is created. Genesis 2, there's a forming of Adam, clay, out of, you know, formed. No female until later. God, Adam is put to sleep. The rib is pulled out. And then we get Adam and Eve. I found it very interesting. So Adam and Eve, um, in Genesis 1, we hear about Elohim. In Genesis 2 is when we hear about Jehovah. Jehovah yeah. is the first introduction of a God because we've got the Father, Genesis 1. What about this Jehovah fellow? Could he be um, invented by this uh, snake, by this reptilian? Could he be a reptilian god like Molak, Mike Mordek? Uh, does he maybe believe in uh, child sacrifice? Um, after all, Jesus, if Jesus was nailed to the cross, I was taught all of my life that Jehovah was the father of Jesus. That's not only laughable, it's insane. There's no way you can stuff Jesus and Jehovah in the same basket. When I was a kid, I tried to uh, stuff a cat in a bucket of water. I wasn't trying to draw on the cat. I was just going to give it a bath. But I found out that you just don't stuff a cat in a bucket of water. Just like trying to stuff Jesus in the same basket as Jehovah is like to stuff, trying to stuff a cat in a bucket of water with six legs. They don't fit. Je Jehovah has been the one that's, you notice that before we were, can ever hope to have peace on earth, goodwill toward men, all religions have to be destroyed. They have been our problem for 6,000 years. All religions must be destroyed along with academia, with all the medicine. All of these empires have to go, religion being one of them. They have told me, the Pleiadians have told me how to get religion. It tell Jehovah to go to hell, go to the hell that he invented. Oops, that's blasphemy. Oh, there's that word again. If we get rid of Jehovah, the best way to get rid of a religion and to get rid of a God is quit worshiping the God. Now we have a deal here. We can get rid of religion and keep Jesus and the Father. Have you ever heard of such a deal? Yeah, that, really? that was what was at the start and then the institution, the church, Vatican, the, the Roman Empire created religion. Well, speaking of the Vatican, you know, um, I get a kick out of everybody taking pot shots at uh, Biden. That's what he's for. I mean, he, he's just a puppet. It, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Well, there's no more princes. There was a, it used to be a prince. A prince was in charge of an, a, a, a polity, if you will. But today we have governors. We have a, a governor of polity, not a principality, but a, a governor of polity. Do you want a governor to decide your future like these low life, that low life in Michigan or California or New York? Do they stand for life, liberty, and happiness? I don't think so, but they're just puppets. There's your, the elite, the people in high places are our enemy, there are reptilians. The, the reptilians um, control the Jesuits. The Jesuits control the Vatican. The Vatican is the papal law, which is the law of the planet. So let's see, um, how, did the, how did this, the Bible, Let's take the Bible, for instance. Everybody, we've, I've been taught that the Bible is the God-breathed word of God. Sorry, folks. It's just simply not true. There's a lot of truth in there, but there's also some 
places that's been edited and it has been added to and taken from. And people will tell me, oh, the Holy Spirit would never let anything happen to God's breathed word of God. Well, go over to the last page in the Bible where it says the end, the last chapter of Revelations. Just go up a few verses and it says, anyone that adds to or takes away from the book of this, of this book, let them be accursed. Well, let me tell you, there's a lot of people are cursed because there's been a lot of people that's edited the word through the centuries. Yeah. Let, let me give you an example. Um, first of all, Jesus was, uh, Jesus was crucified by what he was teaching. Remember, he nailed the law and sin to the cross. That was the whole purpose of the, of the cross is to nail the law and sin and get rid of it. Well, the reptilians slash um, the, oh, the head of the Vatican, uh, scribes and Pharisees. To the scribes and Pharisees, if you get rid of law and sin, they, that is the death of them. They cannot operate without law and without sin. So they had to change the teachings of Jesus, but they couldn't do it because, well, they, they couldn't do it just by crucifying Jesus. They had to obey what Mo Moses said. If Moses said it, you did it, or you wound up getting some rocks bounced off your head. One of the things that Moses said is he put in a custom the next oldest brother custom, you know, if a man dies, the next oldest brother take, marries the wife and takes care of his, um, his affairs. Well, when Jesus died, they, the apostles came to Jesus once and they said, Master, when you leave, what are we supposed to do? Well, without taking a breath, he said, well, when I leave, you go see my brother James. Well, brother James was the next oldest brother of Jesus. He wound up the spiritual leader of Jerusalem. He was the head of the church of Jerusalem. He was known as just James the Just. Even the Pharisees respected him because he had a nickname called Camel Knees. He prayed so much on his knees that he had knees like a camel. But anyway, they were still livid of James because he kept teaching this crazy thing about getting rid of the law and sin. So they crucified. They well, they, they beat him to death, knocked him off the, the, uh, the, the temple wall. Anyway, long story short, Jesus had four brothers, James, Simeon, Joseph, and Judas. Judas was the youngest brother of Jesus. Now, this custom went to the great-grandchild of the youngest brother. Have you ever heard of Judas Cariocus? Judas uh, Cariocus, if you look it up in the phone, Judas Cariocus, the first thing it tells you is that, uh, listen to this, Judas Cariocus, also known popularly as Judas of Jerusalem, each brother was a bishop of Jerusalem, by the way, he was the great grandson of Jude, brother of Jesus, the last Jewish bishop of Jerusalem. Now, how many people have you researched, like uh, since, for instance, uh, Alexander the Great, the first thing you realize that he was the great grandchild of somebody, hmm. nobody. But you research Judas Cariocus. He was uh, the great grandchild of Jude. He was the end of the custom. The scribes and the Pharisees, the, the Roman, the, uh, the Constantine and his crew, they were bound by that custom until Judas Iscariot died. I thought uh, Cariocus was his last name, but Cariocus means of the Lord. This was Judas of the Lord, the great grandchild of Judas. Well, guess when they martyred Judas Cariocus, Constantine, the, the uh, Greek Roman priests martyred Judas Cariocus, the last bloodline of Jesus. They martyred him in 325. Why is 325 the year 325? Why is that important? Well, 325 is when they brought in the Council of Nicaea. 
the Council of Nicaea could not be instituted until the death of Judas Cariocas. They both happened in 325, the death of Judas, 325. And when Constantine got his crew together and formed the narrative of Christianity for forever, the narrative of Christianity came from the Council of Nicaea. You don't believe it? They didn't put all the books in the Bible, but they edited every book that went in the Bible. Check it out. Don't take my word for it. So everything that we've been taught since 325 has come from the Council of Nicaea, and it had nothing to do with the teaching of Jesus. Anyone that believes that they martyred Judas and they carried on the same message, you're either brain dead or you don't have a two brain cells to run together. They murdered, legally murdered Judas called, uh, called martyrdom and they put their narrative in. That was the Roman Empire. After they got everything settled, they went to Rome, built the Vatican. It became the Holy Roman Empire and they have been in control ever since. Their Holy Roman Empire has uh, some lawyers, they're called canon, the canon law. <clears throat> Shouldn't have to teach, teach anybody about canon law. It's handed down from the Vatican. But it all starts with the reptilians, that snake, that humanoid reptilian and the snake that bamboozled Eve is controlled. They control the Jesuits. The Jesuits are the most evil people on the face of planet Earth. Did you realize that Fauci is a Jesuit? He graduated from the Holy Cross College. He boastfully says that he is a proud to be a Jesuit. The Jesuit, the, the Pope in Rome is now a Jesuit Pope. You wanna find out something interesting? Google the oath of the Jewish Pope. I dare you. If you think ripping up open the belly of a pregnant woman and smashing the fetus against the wall is bad you ain't seen nothing it's just the tip of the earthberg this is the jew this is the jesuits the jesuits controlled the vatican the uh, back in genesis here's another point to remember i said that satan is the father of all lies well he he said that one of the most profound truths in all of the Bible, he said to Eve, Eve, you know, God knows when you eat of that tree, you will be as God's knowing good and evil. Well, truer words were never spoken. You see, we're not gods, we're as gods. Jesus about, about Jesus being God, well, Jesus is not God, never has been God, never will be God, doesn't want to be God. He hates the word God. He words, hates anything to do with God or religion. When he washed the apostles' feet, because he was saying to the apostles, look, I'm your brother. I'm your friend. I'm your servant. I'm washing your feet. Don't worship me. And old Peter, top gun Peter said, oh, master, you're not going to wash my feet. What, what did Jesus say to him? He said, if you don't let me wash my, your feet, you will have no part in me. In other words, Peter, if you worship me, you will have no part in me. Um, could it be that every time we go to worship Jesus, he has no part in it? It's just religion. Um, Back to planet, um, planet Elohim. Yeah. If Jesus is from the planet Elohim, that means there's a civilization there. There's a lot of people like Jesus on that planet. I don't know if he was Top Gun or what. 
to, to came to redeem Earth. But uh, they told me that there's a whole civilization on planet Elohim. How do I know? He said, you can prove it. Um, Jesus said, when Jesus returns, oh, oh, for 80 years, I've heard about Jesus returning, Jesus returning. It's become such a freaking religious cliche that I hate to even say it out loud anymore. But guess what? This is the 42nd generation. This is the generation that he's supposed to return. But uh, when I said, well, how come we were never taught about anybody else on planet Elohim? And if it's the father, well, they said uh, very simply, um, it's in the Bible. I never saw it after 80 years. I never knew it. They said, well, go to uh, Revelation. The, uh, I think it's the 22nd verse of Revelation. John on the Isle of Patmos. He come, on this, he come up on this dude uh, likened to the Son of Man. It wasn't Jesus, but it was so much like Jesus. He fell on his face and worshiped this guy. And what did he say? This guy said, get up. Don't worship me. I am your brother. I'm your friend. I'm your servant. Echoing the, Jesus, the words that Jesus said when he washed the apostles' feet. So there was one dude that, you know, and so on the planet. And so you go another verse or two, maybe it's in the next chapter, Paul or uh, John doesn't get it through his thick head yet. He comes across this other guy, likened to the son of man. What's he do? First thing he does is falls on his face to worship this guy. Same thing. He said, get up, don't worship me. I am of thy fellow servant, thy brethren, echoing again the words of Jesus, washing the apostles' feet. Now, they've told me that Jesus is going to return. I hate to say it out loud still, but Jesus, this is a generation that Jesus is going to return. And guess what? We are so wrapped up in religion. The first thing, Jesus, if when Jesus appears, the first thing every at least fundamentalist Christian is going to do, they're going to fall on their knees and they're going to worship Jesus. And what's the first thing he's going to say? He's going to say, get up. Don't worship me. I'm your brother. I'm your friend. I'm your servant. You know, ever since I've begun to, to call Jesus my brother instead of my Lord, he, it's, it, you wouldn't believe the doors that's been opened. He says, get up, quit praying. He says, get up off your knees. How in the world am I going to raise you up to the stature and fullness of me if you're on your knees all the time? I want you to get up and walk with me and be my equal. I've heard that so many times. Yes. Oh. And he, guess what? It gets more exciting. Jesus is going to return. It says he's going to return with 10,000s of his saints. I don't ho I hope they don't all show up at once. They're going to show up in spaceships for feet's sake. Why have we been taught that Satan is in charge of the spaceships and the UFOs? We've been they've been demonized. Don't even believe in UFOs. Don't believe. I was taught all my life that there is no life out there. This is God's headquarters and we're the only ones that We've been kept from that knowledge. The Smithsonian Institute is one of the most evil organizations in the world. They have kept us from our knowing our, our identity and our history. But um, when uh, I was talking about Jesus showing up, um, oh, here's the exciting part that they told me that I never heard of. And I never considered it before. When Jesus shows up, and they all show up, all of planet. Jesus has a project. They invented us. They created us for a reason. The reason being, they're going to make us greater than them. We're going to raise up to this, not only to the stature and fullness of Christ, even unto a perfect man. The reason, they're, Jesus said, I'm going to make, you greater than me. We're all going to be. You see, one thing that creation, you know, if you want to describe uh, God, forget about Jehovah. I've written Jehovah off my list. He's cursed me enough all of my life. But when it comes to imagining God or the source, the source is, uh, is creation. I don't have to 
convince you about creation because I'm talking to you now. But creation has a consciousness. The source is a conscious creation. Now, there's one thing that creation never, ever, ever, ever does. It never creates the same old, same old. It always creates something better and greater than before. And guess what? We are the new creation. Do you realize how many, how many civilizations out there that are watching planet Earth and this new creation coming forth? Yes. This is exciting, folks. All we have to do is get over this hump. We've got to start saying no. Everybody has got to get it through their thick head that there are forces out there that's trying to destroy us. They're trying to destroy humanity. <clears throat> We've got to say no. We've got, oh, people ask me, well, why don't they come and, 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 and help us out? Why, why doesn't, you know, <clears throat> why, why did they leave us in this mess? Well, they explained to me, if you have a, like a seven-year-old son, he wants to be in the big, he likes baseball. I mean, that's all he talks about is baseball. He, so you, en, you enroll him into uh, Little League and he goes into the Little League and you're sitting in the bleachers and you're watching him and he keeps dropping the ball. He keeps striking out. He keeps missing. His, uh, and so you, you, you just have compassion for him and you go out and say, son, you come and sit on the bleachers and I'll do it for you. Your son is never going to make the big leagues. That's why they can't take us out of the game. We have to see that scripture and Genesis 1 has to come to pass. We have to know good and evil. Yes. The only way you can, to know evil, you can't be told about it. You can't dream about it. You can't read about it. You have to go through it. We have to see the face of evil oh before God, yes. we're qualified. We're qualified. We're, we are as gods. We're not gods. We are as gods. We're going to be greater than Jesus. So we have to see the face of evil. That's what we're looking at now in this time we're in. This It's crazy. They're trying to just, the, the reptilians, the elephant in the room, they're trying to destroy humanity. That was their job. And if, well, it says that even the very elect would be deceived if it were possible. Well, it's not possible because the very elite cannot be deceived. But man, in a warfare, there's going to be casualties. I hate to say it, if you've taken the, it's not over. Jesus said to the father once, I have not lost one that you've given me. No, not one. Don't worry about going to hell. Forget about this lake of fire. Tell Jehovah to go to hell. It's just us, Jesus, and the Father from now on. And we're going to win. We've already won. I hate to say that, but we've got this hump to get over. We've got to get rid of these freaking reptilians. And everybody that's been bought and paid for by the reptilians, you know who they are. I don't have to mention any names. And you talk about the face of evil. You don't, when it comes to... Uh, I will say when it comes to Hillary and Abedin, you don't want to see what they did for fun. You are looking into the core of it. You don't want to see the core of evil because it will damage your soul. You won't be able to sleep for a week. Some of uh, it is. Anyway. Yes. Yes. We have to see the face of evil. There's going to be casualties. And. Say, for instance, you take somebody, we've heard that people have taken this and they've died. Well, guess what? It's a tragedy. But when they wake up on the other side, they're going to say, holy crap, I wish this had happened a long time ago. I'm 30, I'm, I'm free, I'm without disease, and on and on. So it doesn't matter which side you're on, whether you're on the other side of the veil or this side of the veil, we're all going to be together. When we get rid of these bastards, when we get rid of these reptilians and these Jesuits and these freaking, the people that are in charge of the Vatican, these, this, this evil, evil Pope, Jesuit Pope, they have to go down the tube. And guess who's going to have to do it? When Jesus, uh, Jesus can't come, until we're like him. 
That's not walking on water and turning water into wine. That will come later. How we are to be like him as to know good and evil. We must know good and evil. We're looking it right in the face today, now. Anyways, Elaine, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, I'm, I just, I'm just ranting on and on and on. You're going to have to <laughs> slow me down here. No, I, I, I can't stop you. It's uh, your words are gold and it's, there, there are many things that resonate with me that of what you said. First, uh, exact words, words for word, what I've been told by Pleiadian people as well. Um, first, they, they said a few times to me, once you are, once the human species got back to dis rediscover their own power and finally be who they are meant to be, one day, he said, when you do that, this day, you will teach us. Yes. I've heard that a few times. And a um, few times I heard as well these words. Humanity needs to see the face of evil and who are his allies. Yes. I've heard that so many times. When the, you know, the American elections went weird, uh, were stolen, uh, I said to, to Thoran, uh, because he has, he, he told me uh, that Mr. T normally, Mr. T uh, will be elected by the people. And um, I said, after the election was stolen, I said, well, hey, that didn't go uh, how you, you, you said to me it would. He said, he's been elected by the people. I didn't lie to you. The blue man cheated. And I sa he said, and he said this, now, this is necessary because humanity needs to see the face of evil and who his allies are. And he said, there was a sleeping water that seemed clear on the surface, but there was a lot of mud in the bottom. He said, we are here to steer the mud at the bottom of the pond, that the mud comes out and it can be scooped, seen, then scooped, and then people can drink the water. And these are the same words that I heard. Um, it's uh, quite interesting. Well, that brings me to uh, to mention. Uh, I've, you know, I've spouted off a lot of things, and I I want to say again, I don't want anybody to believe to believe me. I just want you to consider it. It's my truth. It's in my heart. There's three ways to get truth. It first goes into your head and then goes through your gut into your heart. Have you ever heard anybody say, oh, I had a gut feeling that was good. Well, that's intuition. So once you hear something in your head, it's just rattling around with a lot of like a lot, a lot of fodder. But when it works your way into your gut and into your heart, that's when it becomes truth. And whatever I've, I've, whatever I've said, if it resonates to you, make them confirm it to you. Say, hey, is that crazy Bill? Is he, you know, if I'm the only one hearing this and nobody else is hearing it, then I got to disregard it because we're all in this together. If anybody is out there that is hearing the same thing that resonates to this, uh, I'd like to hear about it. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of lonely. I'm up here in the uh, uh, Northern Alberta, Canada and the boonies gets kind of lonesome sometimes. And but no, I've had fun. Uh, I, I, I'm a blessed. I'm a blessed man. To I I, I can't. Um, it's just so humbling to realize that uh, if anybody is connect uh, contacted by uh, aliens, could be could be Palladians. It could be Octarians. It could be you know. There's a lot of them out there. But if somebody does contact you. I would uh, kind of suggest that you maybe you might consider keeping it to yourself because I made the mistake of telling some people that I was contacted by the Palladians and I got some friends and relatives that, uh, you know, these crazy uh, conspiracy theorists, uh, alien contactees, you know, they're, they're kind of uh, at an arm's distance. The alien, um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, anyway, I lost the thought. Uh, if you're tapped on the shoulder, remember, synchronicity is the alphabet of the spirit. 
you'll learn the synchronicity first. If you start, when synchronicity goes off the charts and you realize, hey, this is not chance anymore. I mean, uh, I've been awash with synchronicity lately. I mean, you talk about something big on the horizon. How many times have you heard people say, something big is about to happen. And buddy, this is September. And uh, get you some get you some experts to listen to. Kudos to Big Weir and Jeannie Moonstone. About I've taught all my life that tarot cards were of the devil. Well, guess what these tarot cards are um, bringing about? And find yourself an expert, somebody that uh, I like to follow, uh, Cliff High. I don't know how. That much information could be stuffed into one brain. It's insane, uh, pun intended. And uh, Dick Algar and, and and those remote viewers, and uh, Janina with the tarot cards. Pay attention, folks. Uh, those tarot cards are synchronicity. It's. I'm not a remote viewer, but uh, I don't think I don't think that quick on my fe my feet. I get the information and I process it. And uh, I'm still interested in what uh, Dick Algar and those guys, what they found out about Darth Vader. And you might say, well, Darth Vader, that's all fantasy. Well, if you want to talk about fantasy, how about talking for the, about the last 6,000 years, the fantasy <laughs> we've been in? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. Well, uh, you know, Star Wars is really a uh, spot on uh, copy of the Orion Wars uh, with the Empire, with the Resistance, the Black League, uh, the Jedi, we had, uh, the Council of Orion. I mean, it's, it's too weird to be, to be a coincidence, you know, so that wants to bring that up. So this planet, yeah, sorry. You want to say well, something? Speaking of uh, like Star Trek, Star Trek, oh. uh, Gene, Rod Gene Roddenberry was hooked in. You know, being an old fart, uh, I, uh, I've i been able to hear a lot of things through the years. And I, I remember if you, there's there was a general, uh, General Douglas MacArthur. He was uh, one of the, him and Eisenhower is one of the two generals that was responsible for the outcome of uh, World War II. And when he, they, uh, they retired uh, General MacArthur, and he was a West Point guy. His heart was at West Point. So when he was retired, he went, he gave a, a, a farewell, farewell address to the, to the nation. I remember hearing that. When he gave a, re, when he finished the, re, the, the, the address to the nation, he went to West Point and he gave uh, an address to the West Point cad cadets. They were the future generals that was going to be in charge of, of America. And he was talking about future weapons, future weapons of war. And it was 1960. Again, you can read, you can Google it, listen to that speech of General MacArthur talking to the cadets. He was saying, we're going to be fighting off world entities. We're going to have health a hundred years uh we're going to be living over a hundred years hundreds of years we're um what else we were, we were going to be off uh space travel we were going to be uh free of disease and the thing that caught my uh, uh, ear was that we're going to have weather warfare we're going to make it rain and we're going to make it shine. You think all of these uh, hurricanes and earthquakes and talks, the summits, you think that's God? No, that's man made. They're, we're right in the middle of a spiritual war and they're using weather warfare. If you don't believe it, go back. This was in 1960 when General MacArthur said that. 1960. How long ago? That was before most of you were born. And that's been going on. And they were talking about it then. You can bet your boots that they were already into it. Farther, far advanced. And space travel. Uh, I don't think that Star Trek was so uh, such much of a fantasy. There's mm -hmm. a lot going on. These Palladians are 200 years um, ahead of us. 
to 200 years advanced ahead of us. Think about what uh, what planet Earth would be 200 years from now. It's, you know, we're, we're de dealing with some fantastic individuals, but there's one thing that we've got to get past and that's this face of evil. Yes. When we, when we see all, see, all wake up and see the face of evil, that's when our brother, our brothers and sisters of another planet, the father is going to show up. Humanity is uh, in an abusive relationship with the, the deep state and the governments. Uh, well, and everything that's behind. Uh, we need to stand up for ourselves. Nobody can take us out of this abusive relationship because we'll go back into it. We won't learn. We need to experience it. And to the point, to the critical singularity that it's so too much that we just crack up and we crack open. And suddenly we wake up and we realize, we open our eyes and we run away and we say never no more. But we need to experience it and go to the deep to know what it is and to learn from it and to change and to evolve. And they are holding our hands, our good friends. They are holding our hands and they are making sure that we go safely as a species through it. There are casualties, of course. There are wounds and, um, and terrible things. But unfortunately, that's how we need to go. I think you share oh, yeah. the same, uh, yeah. Oh yes, it's going to get nasty. You have to, it has to get nasty before we can see the face of evil. Yeah. And when it comes to the blasphemy about us being greater than Jesus, that was his words. You know, Jesus never wrote anything down. Everything that we hear Jesus said, somebody said he said. Now Jesus said a lot of things, but there's a lot of things he said he didn't said. So uh, about being greater. You just have to turn to Ephesians 4. It spells it right out. I'm going to be greater. Any, any father, any parent worth his salt doesn't want their son and daughter to grow up and be like them. They want them to grow up and be greater than him, them. It's just, it's just the way life is. And it's no different than the Pleiadians. Sure. We're going to grow up, but they're going to make us greater than them. You know why? Jesus returned, redeemed earth. Well, when we become greater than Jesus, guess what? There's a universe out there that needs to be redeemed. And you talk about space and Gene Roddenberry and, well, anyway, just use your imagination. It's all about imagination and fantasy. If you can imagine it, it can happen. The only thing is to be aware of our potential. The Pleiadian and the Federation and the good ones, they know our potential. That's why they, they are helping us. They know they have hope. But the baddies as well, they know that our potential. That's why they want to crush it. And at the moment, we wake up to who we really are. Well, everything is it's over. Well, that's one of the reasons Jesus walked the earth. Well, he, there was a lot of reasons, but the main reason that I see that he came to show us not only our destiny, but our potential. Yeah. We're going to be like him and greater, greater things shall you do. He said, these things I do, you're going to do the greater things. That should be our first clue. And uh, you talk about deciding to be greater than, you know, some people think Jesus is a myth. Some people think he's a real McCoy. But whether, whatever, in between, take your pick. We'll, uh, it'll all come out in the wash. Thank you, uh, William. That's absolutely mind-blowing. Um, it really confirms a lot of things. And um, what, what would be your message now if you had something to say now to address to humanity, to help them and support them to go through this, an advice, what would you say? Oh, boy. Um, well, 
Well, we've been religion, I told you, before we can have peace on earth, goodwill toward men is when all religions are destroyed. They have laid out a plan where we can not only get rid of religion, we can keep Jesus and the Father. I can't think of a better deal than that. So meditate on that, concentrate on that. Um, there, was, there was two covenants. Um, Jesus said, when I become your high priest, I'm going to make a whole new covenant with you, unlike the covenant I made with Egypt when, or Israel when I brought him out of Egypt. Now, Jesus is not a high priest. He's, out of, he's from the order of Melchizedek, not from the order of Levi. Moses and, that, and Aaron and his sons, they were of the Levi tribe, but Jesus was of the tribe of Judah. When remember when Paul uh, when uh, Abraham came back from the slaughter of the kings, he stopped off and paid tithes to Melchizedek. Well, you wonder why he paid tithes. The the, the lesser always tithe, pays tithes to the greater. Abraham knew that El Melchizedek was greater, so he paid tithes to him. And you wonder why didn't. Uh, Abraham hang around and worship Melchizedek instead of going back and worshiping Jehovah. Well, first of all, he had a contract with Jehovah, but you don't worship Melchizedek. It says, the Bible says that Jesus is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. He's not a high priest. There are no priests in Melchizedek. It's prince, It's peace. It's, it's the order, the order that Jesus is in. That is the order. So, my, what I would say is, I'm not going to tell you not to go to church. I'm not going to tell you not to worship. But I would say to people, if you go to church, next time you go to church, uh, look at the realm and the, the, at the building that you're in. If the workers, the built, if the workers that built that building had their hands cut off, you just might be in the right place because we're supposed to worship in a place made without hands. <laughs> I'd say, I'd say. But we have to get rid of religion. It's been a curse for, it goes, I'm, I'm going back 6,000 years. It's, it's probably further than that, you know, but uh, just concentrate on, uh, on your brother and the father that planet that's and you're you don't have to go to church and receive the spirit that antenna that we got to receive the message is our dna our dna we were born with it we don't have to go and get anything we carry it with us it's within us so listen tune in try as best you can is to tune in to that antenna that the father jesus said I got to go to the cross and die so that I can go to the Father. So me and the Father can send you the spirit of truth that will teach you all things, all things, not the Bible, not the prophets, not the apostles, not the Pope, not that, 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 that there's only one thing that will teach us all things. And that is the spirit of truth. That's the Father. That's the planet that sends messages to planet Earth. So oh yeah, I'm, my advice is, tune in i'm blessed to have tuned in but i don't have any special powers i don't have anything that anybody else doesn't have we're all we all have the same dna those that don't have the dna those reptilians uh then their future is not very bright so just revel in the fact that you've got the dna you have the antenna and start listening don't seek aliens don't seek spirits wait for them to contact you wait for them to tap you on the shoulder and pay attention to synchronicity that's thank you well thank you william thank you well it's, it's been a real pleasure i consider you a little sweetheart and you you are doing uh, you're just uh, you're just blazing trails you're a couple of what <laughs> that you just had a book another book come out and you've got a big following and people resonate with you you uh you have a sweet spirit and uh... <laughs> thank you thank you thank you my 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 dream is that 
everyone that does the same as me just meet each other and we all unite and work together and uh, I'm, that's that's united that that's how we we go forward so uh, and, yes um, yes so listen thank is there, you uh, well hopefully i've covered everything i when you have some information some exciting information it's it's just good to share it with everyone yeah and uh i didn't want to interrupt you it was amazing and thank you so much william uh, <clears throat> been my th pleasure thank you so much um thank you <laughs>